Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Today, let's talk about some dangerous fragrances. Now, when I say dangerous, what do I mean here? Now, obviously, I'm talking about fragrances packed to the brim with carcinogens and allergens. That's right, baby. We're talking about fragrances today that will legitimately kill you. Wait, no, I got that all wrong. This is a, a TikTok trend. Right, okay. I mean, dangerous fragrances because the ladies love them. Not like you're gonna die. That's different. We'll do that another time, maybe. But today, we'll do top 10 dangerous fragrances for men. They're dangerous because they're gonna get you compliments, dude. Gonna get you so much attention. People are gonna love the way you smell. It's like Men's Warehouse. They're gonna love the way you look, except here they're gonna love the way you smell. And by the way, Men's Warehouse suits, nobody is loving, <laughs> loving the way you look with those, I'm sorry. But if you're rocking them and they make you happy, more power to you. We are uh, officially sidetracked. The video has not even begun. Let's jump into it. Top 10 dangerous fragrances for men that women love that will get you attention and compliments, all that stuff. Dangerous. All right, guys, before we jump into the first official fragrance, let me bestow upon you a code. That code is GENTS10. It will get you 10% off LuckyScent.com or TwistedLily.com or both of them and or. So Twisted Lily, Lucky Scent, GENTS10. Save yourself a little bit of money. And with that money that you save, buy yourself some Olive Garden, maybe. It's a very classy Italian establishment. All right, let's kick it off with a fragrance that needs no introduction, but I'm gonna give it one anyway. It's one of the best-selling fragrances on the market. Lots of you out there probably already own it. It's Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Now, this is the go-to whipping boy fragrance for when people wanna say, don't buy that. Everyone has that. It's like a rite of passage. If you have a YouTube channel or a TikTok account or an Instagram, or you're just a person that exists, then you come out and you say, oh, you're, you're Savage, dude. You're wearing that? What are you, a pleb? I don't wear Dior Sauvage. I wear something much more rare, something you've never heard of. It's called Y Eau de Parfum, loser. You see a lot of that. Gotta love it. But even though people love to say Dior Sauvage is too popular and therefore is lame, it's actually dangerously not lame. Dangerously not lame. This stuff is hyper versatile. You can wear it anywhere, anytime. Get tons of compliments. The performance is fantastic. The bottle is sweet because it has a magnetic cap and also a pressurized atomizer. That's like two for one. Mm, smells delicious. By delicious, I mean metallic and, and sweet and ambroxany and peppery, which I do. Sauvage is awesome for pulling positive attention. Yes, Sauvage is hyper popular, but you know why? Because it's one of the best compliment pulling fragrances that has ever existed since the beginning of time, since the dawn of man. Since beings climbed out of primordial ooze, there have been maybe a handful of smells that have pulled more compliments <laughs> than Sauvage. It's true. Up next, we are going into the realm of the niche fragrance with this beauty, Morning Chess from Wilhelm Parfumery. Look at that bottle. So classy, exquisite, like a fine piece of glass, like a sculpture sitting upon an ancient emperor's display cabinet. I don't know. Now, Morning Chess is most likely the most popular fragrance from this house. And for good reason, it's fantastically versatile and compliment pulling like pretty much all of these fragrances are. But what it's most well known for is the similarity it has to one Creed Aventus. Yes, Creed's Aventus. We all know that, don't we? It has bergamot, leather, and galbanum as some of the main notes in the fragrance. And when you look at the note breakdown for Morning Chess, it doesn't actually look super similar to Aventus, but when you smell it, you'll immediately be reminded of the creed. And one of the things I do enjoy about Morning Chess that sets it apart a bit from Aventus is it has this very fresh kind of green feel to it, almost grassy to an extent. And then instead of having the uh, birch take over as the base note, this one instead has that leather. So Morning Chess, really good stuff. And that one can set you apart a little bit, but still gives you something 
that's going to be a little bit different from what most people are wearing. So that one is really nice because it gives you this familiar scent profile, but gives it a twist that makes it more unique. All right, let's talk about something that I find quite unique as far as designer fragrances go, Tom Ford Noir Extreme. And this bad boy right here has been kind of a silent stone cold killer for a while. It's still popular at stores like Macy's, sells quite well, especially when you consider that at full retail, this Tom Ford, it ain't cheap. Uh, I say this Tom Ford, all Tom Fords are not cheap. Noir Extreme I love because it's very unique. It doesn't really smell like anything else out there in terms of designers or even niche fragrances, but it's still really wearable, very versatile, and very sexy. The way I said that was kind of creepy even for me. After that one, Bulgari Man in Black. Now this has some flankers that are also fantastic that are next to impossible to find. Black Orient, for example, really good stuff. Thankfully though, we can still find Man in Black. This one similar to Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf, but I think actually between the two, I would rather wear this one. It introduces a very nice boozy note that gives it this, this sweetness and warmth that is maybe lacking from the original Spice Bomb. Also, bottle, looks classy, looks cool. Very good performance as well, fall and winter time. This is an absolute beast. So Man in Black, it may not get the hype of Spice Bomb or Spice Bomb Extreme, and it may kind of just fall by the wayside compared to some of those bigger houses out there, the Chanel's, the Dior's, the YSL, stuff like that. But Man in Black is an absolutely fantastic fragrance for pulling attention. All right, back to Dior. We got Dior Sauvage in here. We need Dior Homme, and I'm going with Dior Homme 2020 for this list. Dior Homme 2020. Yes, it got rid of the iris, which is uh, it's kind of a catastrophe that that happened, but I like what came out of it. I will no longer make apologies for liking this fragrance now when I first hated it. It is what it is. Move on. I have. This is a great, fresh, woody fragrance with a pop of spice there off the top. Great fragrance for office use, casual use, formal use, any use, any time of year, any time of day, any age. A two-year-old can wear this and smell like a 25-year-old with a million dollars in their investment account. They're gonna smell like they know what they're doing. You're gonna respect that two-year-old. You're gonna smell this on them and be like, what, what? Why is he crushing it more than me? He's not even 800 days old yet. He already owns a Lamborghini. Oh, I'm still living with my mom. I need to buy Dior Homme 2020. I just wrote your next advertisement for you, Dior. You're welcome. I'm expecting a check in the mail. So when I see that advertisement, you heard it here, that was me, Dior. I'm just playing, that'll never happen. They don't have a sense of humor like that. Their next advertisement is gonna be somebody like Robert Pattinson, who is really good in the Batman, by the way, just looking pensive. And, and having the picture of the bottle on the screen. I need to work at an ad agency. Okay, we're going from Dior Own 2020 over to Nasamato's Pardon. Little itty bitty 30 milliliter size bottles from this house, but they are thankfully extract to parfum and they're not terribly expensive as long as you don't look at it as a price per milliliter price. Pardon smells like a higher quality take on L'Anston de Guerlain, which is in and of itself a fantastic gentlemanly fragrance. This is that type of scent that smells elegant and a little bit mature without smelling too dated. Again, a very sexy fragrance, not going to appeal as much to younger guys, but assuming that you uh, are put together well, like you dressed as if you have eyes. Don't mean to be mean, but if you're going out with like an orange, uh, a neon orange t-shirt with the neon orange sweater vest above it, and then some MC Hammer pants and some uh, New Balances, then uh, probably the pardon is, is it's not gonna take you to the next level, I'm sorry. What do you mean? I thought fragrances were the end all be all. I could dress like a slob and have everybody wanting me. Hmm, no. But back to this fragrance, pardon. Chef's Kiss, my favorite from the house. So wearable, but at the same time, so elegant. All right, next one is a bit of a hype beast. A lot of people showing this one love, Le Mal de Parfum. Of course, I'm a big fan, I dig it. It takes that Le Mal DNA to the next level. The iris in here, absolutely right up my alley. Really good performance. It's the type of scent that you can wear casually 
and it works perfectly where you can wear it in more formal situations, more business situations, potentially date nights. It works just about anywhere. Just adjust your sprays up or down as needed, depending on where you're going, who you're gonna be with, but it can fit all those situations like a glove. It has that original Lamal compliment factor, but taken up because this one is more modern. As I've said, each time I talk about this fragrance, the issue with the original Lamal, if you wanna call it an issue, I mean, that is a classic fragrance at this point. It's a bit of a masterpiece, you could say, even if I don't really wanna wear it anymore. But the problem with that one is it smells like a fragrance of its time. So when you smell Lamal, you're like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that definitely smells a little bit dated. This one does not. Personal love of mine up next, Stronger With You, absolutely. You could go with a lot of fragrances in the Stronger With You line because they work so well. In fall or winter time, the Stronger With You line, find the one that works for you, wear the heck out of it. For me, it's this one. I also really like Stronger With You Oud, but that one, yeah, not easy to find in the US, unfortunately. I got a bottle from fragrancebuy.ca when they restocked it, but it sold out in like two seconds. You know, who knows when they get it back. It's uh, it's rough. It's hard out here for a stronger with you Oud Lovin' G, which is like, how many of us? Not a lot. So stronger with you intensely, that's gonna be the strongest in the stronger with you line. Strong, 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 strong. Projects heavily, lasts a long time, big time compliment puller. You know the drill, stronger with you intensely. I like this one a little bit more. It's not quite as strong, but it has this added booziness that I think really accentuates the notes and the fragrance, the, the scent profile here, that kind of gourmandy, warm, rich fragrance that this is. It just elevates it a little bit further. Stronger with you, absolutely. I think it's just awesome. Best release in the line for me. Blue fragrance time. I don't have enough blue fragrances here, you say. I only have Sauvage. Well, let me give you a really friggin' expensive one. How about this one? Elysium Parfum Poem from Raja Parfum. So this fragrance here is uh, like almost $500. But on the bright side of things, it smells really good. So yeah, this is extremely elegant as far as blue fragrances go. It's got amazing depth to the fragrance. It has this effervescence, this sparkle to it, where when you smell it, you go, oh yeah, that does have higher quality and a better because you just went heavily into debt buying the thing. We don't need to eat this week. I got myself a Elysium Parfum. Poor Rome. Really though, if I'm looking for a fragrance that I know everybody is going to like, something that has not even an iota of a potential offensive nature to it, and I want it to be just the best smelling, highest quality type of fragrance in that style, this is what I'll reach for. And between this and Parfum Cologne, uh, I would go with this one if I could have only one. Although that higher price point may make you do a double take. If money is no issue at all, then that's the one I'd go with. Last one, gentlemen, Eau de Toilette Intense. Gotta get some more iris in here. Yeah, we had Le Mal de Parfum, but this one has iris at the front. Instead of having it be kind of melding together with the other notes like it does in Le Mal de Parfum right here, iris right there. This is an awesome one for, again, versatility, because this one you can wear in spring or fall or winter, potentially even summer, if you if you really dial it back. It has this nice freshness and sweetness that take a little bit of the edge off of the makeup-y nature of the iris that's used in the Gentleman line. And to an extent, this one replaces in my collection Dior Homme O, which was discontinued years ago, because Dior Homme O, which I still own, but Dior Homme O was one of my go-to spring iris fragrances. And this one, though maybe not quite as fresh as that one to me, fills that void a little bit. And it's super classy to boot. Thank you guys for hanging with me here until the end. Let me know in the comments some fragrances that you have deemed dangerous and not because they make your skin break out into hives. That's, again, a different type of video. Maybe we'll cover that in the future. I'll leave a post on the community tab. What fragrance has made you break out? Yeah, actually, yeah, maybe I'll do that video. Whoa, big brain. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.